Thank you, Arun. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of TGS 2020 and Thai Hyderabad team, I would like to welcome and thank you all to be here. My name is Rashmi Ghosh, Executive Director at Thai Pune, and got the privilege to host today's panel with the renowned and established entrepreneurs. Let me quickly brief you all on today's panel and speakers. Panel discussion is going to be on strategizing for a successful exit. We have Naga Prasad, who is the director at People Combined Group, and Arun Jain, the founder at Polaris and CMD at Intellect Design, as a panel speakers, and Basil Mofta as a panel moderator. Basil is an experienced company builder and general partner at Global Ventures, an international venture capital firm. He has been an advisor, investor, and board member with the numerous global technology companies. A champion of diversity and inclusion, he grew the business seamlessly and made numerous strategic acquisitions. Basil holds a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering from the American University, an MBA from Harvard Business School. Handing over to Basil now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rashmi, and thank and welcome everybody to today's session about strategies for successful exit. I'm I'm honored to have with me a great panel. Uh, Mr. Arun Jain, the Chairman and Managing Director of Intellect Design. He is also the founder of, uh, uh, or was the founder of Polaris Group, Chairman and Managing Director of the Intellect Design Arena Limited, the world's first full-spectrum fintech products company. Intellect powers over 250 leading global banks and financial uh, institutions. And Arun commenced his entrepreneurial journey by setting up the Nucleus Software in 1986 Polaris Software in 1993, and Intellect in, in 2011. He's an evangelist of design thinking, and his brainchild FinTech 2012, the world's first design center at Chennai, dedicated to financial te uh, technology, came into being. Arun has also been nominated as the chairperson of the Board of Governors of the Indian Institute of Information Technology in Ranchi, Jakahari, India, of the uh, by the Honorable President of India for a period of three years with effect from the 2nd of September 2020. He's also been bestowed with many awards and he has uh, a uh, several lifetime achievement awards. Mr. Arun Jain, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. And I'd also like to introduce our, our second panelist today, Mr. Naga Prasad, who is the uh, heads up or the co-founder of People Combined Group. The group has been in the education and hospitality for about three decades. The group, is the, he, the group is the founder of the Oak Ridge International Schools, OI Play Schools, and Westbury Schools, and hospitality brand Seven. In 2019, he, they exited from Oak Ridge and OI. The Oak, the Oak Ridge exit is the single largest FDI in education in India with a clean 100% exit. And after this successful exit, Mr. Prasad is currently working on a new idea, again, in the education space. He has pledged a third, uh, uh, to contribute a third of his um, um, savings, I guess, and so on. You can tell us more about that, Ms. Naga, to philanthropy. And, and through People Combined Foundation, the work that they have done during the COVID to help migrate workers through Stop the Walk campaign and contribution to help healthcare workers receive has received many accolades. He's again also very well recognized, very well known, um, a member of, of, of the community. And it, you know, it, it's a real pleasure to have you with us here, Mr. Naga, today. How are you? Uh, do you want to say that again? I'm not sure I heard the audio. Can you speak up? Thank you very much. Very good. Audio check done. Perfect. We're all good. We're ready to go. Gentlemen, a pleasure to have you here. And I mean, you know, how do you prepare for a successful exit? I mean, how do you know when the time is right? And maybe I can start with you, Mr. Jane, just to, to tell us, how did you know that moment when you wanted to exit the business? Uh, I'll just take a slightly intro introduction to the whole term exit and uh, this is a very good topic I has picked up because that's a entrepreneur uh, core mm. value called exit. He works on uh, uh, building new things and exiting new things. So first of all, when he starts his journey, he starts his journey from a building a product, a concept, and then build a product. And then he starts sell the concept to some customer, few customers, and then he take it forward to build the operational capability and then he build up a leadership capacity, then he build up a finance capacity, then he build up a brand and sales. So there are six things he does in his life. He builds six capitals and each time when he's building one capital, he's exiting from the previous capital. So uh, so what, what is the time is right? I call to entrepreneur as a social architect of the society. He look at the human need. He understand the desirability of the human need. 
any service that human need by providing some services to do it. It's like a design thinking language. He knows the desirability, he builds feasibility, he builds viability and creates the intersection of it, which is called the experience. And that's where the entrepreneur comes in. And he has a purpose to be driven. He's a purpose driven person. Now in this scenario, when the successful exit is there, it can be at two points of time in the journey. One, when he believes that somebody else can contribute better in that journey than he himself can do, or his purpose, which he has set up the institution is reached to his point where he wants to have a freedom of the choice to say, I want to contribute in some other area and I have contributed in this area. I want to go to philanthropy. I want to go to uh, learning some new businesses. So there are two trigger points for uh, looking at a successful exit. It's a long answer. No, I, I love the answer. I think it's fantastic that it's built on this multiple levels and dimension. But Mr. Naga, I think, you know, entrepreneurs are ambitious people, right? They always, when they get to one level, they want to go to the next level. How did you know it was the time to exit or, or how, did, how did you reach that conclusion? Um, exit is uh, not a overnight decision or uh, uh, it was built to exit. However, during the journey, uh, after reaching a stage, uh, then uh, we were looking at uh, the options possible, two, three options, whether we continue to run, or second is uh, bring the second generation into the business or exit. These are the three options we were evaluating. And when we were uh, building um, school like Oak Ridge, we were very clear that we are building an institution that is going to last beyond our lifetime. So institutions should be uh, run by professional organizations. Uh, over time, they become like a, a promoter redundant and uh, keep contributing to the society. So that's when we thought we should not uh, bring the second generation, rather pass it on to a professional organization that is globally focused and take this uh, brand that we have built to the next level. That's when we have decided to exit. Fantastic, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and just coming back to you, Mr. Arun, in terms of the Polaris journey, I know many people know the company, but hearing it from you about you know, can you tell us about that journey and, 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 and more importantly, the decisions to merge and then the decision to exit? And so I'd love to understand how those, the different points in your journey around Polaris. Thank you, Basil, to uh, give that perspective of Polaris. A lot of people know Polaris, but I think we started in 93 and uh, we grew extremely fast during that period. Some people on this, on this webinar were not born yet in 93, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, in 99 we went IPO I, I think it was a um, brilliant IPO we could create a billion dollar company in 1999 uh, the post IPO and then uh, it was a top 10 companies out of India IT outsourcing services space so we enjoyed the uh, highlights and the change and transformation which India was experiencing during this period of uh, IT revolution and that's really helped first level. And then that is the time when we acquired first multinational company, Kozal, City Corp, Overseas Limited in name of Orbitech in 2002. It was the largest Indian company acquiring global multinational company uh, outfit. We paid close to $200 million for that acquisition during that period of time in 2002. These numbers are 2002 numbers, not current numbers. So and this, with this, we come, we taken the IP assets of Citibank. We taken a lot of intellectual asset was built into two hundred million dollar acquisition, and then the next ten years went into just uh, aligning, building a new value proposition for the market, uh, going to the large markets. In two thousand twelve, we built up a hundred million dollar product business and three hundred million dollar service business, and that is the time when we look at it next ten year journey and when we're sitting in a a strategic room with a board and looking at next 10 years 2022 we are looking at it service business what is the potential of service business growth and what is the product business growth we find that these two businesses run with the two different ceos we took a large decision of demerger so this is a 
first of its kind again the merger of the two companies one product company and one services company polaris remain service company 2014 and intellect become as product company and after it separated all the things after 12 months of its separation we started the journey of exiting polaris because my heart was more in product and licenses and i cannot keep my shoes in both the boats and one boat need to get let go otherwise the larger business always consumes my mental time and entrepreneur the major cost and major investment is is intellectual time and physical not the physical time but the intellectual time is most important for him so letting go was a big decision making point making a 200 crore company which is giving a profit and intellect which is eating a revenue prof investment of 200 crore it was completely a two area i first time experience after 20 years that i have to bear the losses and i have to go to bank for taking loans or fundraising till that time i was in a comfort zone so for entrepreneur life being a vulnerable i would say when you are vulnerable your mind thinks 10 times faster and that's how i push myself to the out of comfort zone to set up intellect design and, the- and you you and i spoke about this earlier and and i'm interested to for you to share it with the audience about how do you let go how do you mentally prepare yourself to let go and then if you don't mind also say how do you share that news with your management team the people that you know grew the company when you say you know what i'm out do they feel betrayed or do they feel <laughs> you know how do they feel uh, beautiful point uh, basil the two things were two are questions you are asking how to pre- prepare myself uh, as an entrepreneur it was a it was a bigger decision to look at it how how do i let go uh, in jain uh, scriptures uh, where i come from aparigraha non attachment is a biggest piece in our life that how do we remain non attached letting go the brand which you build over the period of time you, it becomes your identity so it was a good experiment which my, with my spouse i shared and few friends which we spent some time on looking at the holistic perspective what my life purpose is is life purpose is polaris or life purpose is social contribution or life purpose is something different once i align to the larger life purpose then polaris purpose becomes smaller so the simple principle when your two lines make other line bigger so if other line become bigger then letting go polaris become easier on answering second question because it was 13000 employee company and uh, polaris was close to 9000 people who had worked in the company has put a sweat in the company and to tell them uh, that we are taking this decision uh, that was a more difficult question for me personally and that was more hurting sometime to me personally or emotionally and then i shared with first 10 people then next 50 people and then next 100 people and then look at the rational of what we are doing and what is the what is the career they are doing so what company we will be choosing for polaris to go is not a financial decision it's a decision where they will get benefited of a larger size we were around 400 350 million if other company were to say we took a similar size company around 500 million dollar company combined company become a billion dollar company so every employee get a better platform to work on work on operate on that was my consideration set so that we believe that we have contributed in building a billion dollar organization for virtusa and then virtusa become a billion dollar organization so that their dream also gets merged with our dream and that was a point uh, i could able to meet two emotional uh, elements of the selling off no i i com- i completely understand and i mean i i think you know the emotional side of an entrepreneur's journey is as difficult as the business side right and 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 letting go and communicating and having people accept that decision is is a very difficult but getting you know down to business mr naga if i can come to you i'd love to hear um were you were you planning can you let me share a bit more detail were you planning the exit for a long time or was it a surprise how did you find the investors kind of give give the entrepreneurs and 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 business leaders on the call some of the tips and tricks of how you get the the largest ed, exit in in an education business which you know not a simple thing to do i presume so when arun was explaining i was just correlating what we went through personally i went through most of the experiences are similar experiences maybe the size is different um and another coincidence is uh, people combine was also founded in uh, 1993 um, there are quite a few similarities um, 
it um, as i mentioned uh, we have not built um, the institution uh, for a high value exit however um, as we were um, bringing it to a, reach the stage and uh, uh, looking at the future next 5 to 20 years time what's what it is going to look like so however we were uh, very um, focused uh, on the governance from uh, very early on because um, we always believed that in education uh, mostly uh, that governance uh, issue is a big question mark but uh, we we kept it very clear to ourselves it is not always the profit that is going to get you value rather what kind of governance standards you maintain that's what it is going to get you the value so that that is one thing as a result we are uh acquisition uh ready second thing uh, also we there were a couple of rounds of equity private equity investment um and we have given exit to both so there is a clear, clear established track record of dealing with funds professional board and uh, uh, proper organization structure and also promoters redundancy Uh, organization can run on its own these are some of the characteristics that we have built over time not necessarily preparing for an exit but this is what we believed incidentally the buyer saw this is a very rare phenomena in india that any k12 uh, 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 organization is uh, this level of professionally run so they looked at evaluated and uh, we were also mentally prepared uh, for something like this to happen at any time so both have matched right now oh, that's fantastic thank you thank you for sharing those strategies and i agree quality in in a company such as governance transparency operations processes really do matter at the exit i mean i think we've all done acquisitions here as well so you know you learn from what you when you do the acquisitions the problems you face that when you become a seller hopefully that you become more cognizant of those things can you tell us what was the biggest challenge in your mind during that process i know it this happened last year i believe so what what got in the way or or what do you wish you knew today that when you were going through the exit you would have been even more prepared than you were yeah as arun explained um, it was uh, the biggest uh, challenge is um, emotional um, separation uh, when we were building uh, uh, the institution uh, it, it was not a business unit it was so involved uh, activity and uh, about um, uh, 1600 uh, employees particularly teachers teachers who are mostly emotional uh, by nature uh, and um, we are uh, ranked 15 in a uh, uh, great place to work so you, you can understand what level of uh, um, connectedness we had with employees and um, on one fine day we are just walking out was just um, very difficult to um, comprehend everybody was including myself was into tears um, but we um, compared it with like uh, your daughter getting married to and uh, so when a daughter leaves so, so every parent uh, has uh, a ts so uh, the similar emotion we went through so no, I, i i i can imagine separation and i don't know if there's anything that can prepare people you know selling a business is 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 a journey and and when you get to that point but You know, Ar- Mr. Arun, you've been also an acquirer, so you bought businesses as much as you've, you know, sold and exited business. What do you look for? What what are the key things that stand out for you when making an acquisition that either make you do it or or not, for that matter? Uh, there are a few criteria. Uh, I look at um, to evaluate the business around six uh, parameters. I would say. how is the product first of all the depth of the product the strength of the product in technology business the product and technology are the core piece which is there which is a first piece where i would give almost 33% one third of the weightage the second piece would be 
how do you do the execution how is the operational how the execution is there operational process systems are there and then third is the financial governance how is the financial governance running fourth is the leadership fifth is the customer base and sixth is the brand and sales engine which is there for the business i call it belief there are six capital b stand for brand e stand for end customer l for leadership uh, i for intellectual property what business is bringing with in the form of the product or the processes e stand for execution capital and f for finance capital so there are six capital in the business normally all the is steps which is the given by the investment banker is more focused on financial metrics and other metrics but i believe there are six metrics which is required to be there which is a belief of the entrepreneur who is building the business and equivalent to belief of the six capital b e l i e f that's fantastic and i i think i hope everybody wrote that down because those are the things i agree with you those are the things that matter you know the customer base the product but you know the leadership and uh, and all of the things you mentioned are are interesting um when when mr naga just to come back to you i mean you made a really big decision after the exit in terms of how you wanted to lead your 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 life and and what you wanted to do next i'd love for you to tell us how you came to that and and share a little bit more about it so after exit i am doing two things one is uh, philanthropy and uh, second one is uh, the new um, edtech startup uh, the philanthropy part um, was decided even before exit um, so uh, uh, we always believed in uh, giving back to the society and uh, um, that's when um, i just told my children and uh, said uh, i contribute one third of my net worth for uh, philanthropy and uh, i also believe in uh, educating uh, below poverty children um, in a large numbers by using technology so that um, uh, education is going to change uh, individual and then family and the society at large so i am integrating my passion my expertise and my um, social consciousness into one so that um, it uh, the synergy is good and i every day i am not pushing myself for uh, to uh, be on multiple boards rather everything has a common thread to it i like first of all commend you on that and i think that's that's you know something everybody should look look up to and and and, and congratulations on your group and everybody you know doing that but i also heard you said you have another edtech is it you couldn't help yourself or is it just the 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 feeling that you know what i still am an entrepreneur and will always be an entrepreneur yeah um i i am always an entrepreneur i never worked for anyone uh, in my life including with this exit i exited on the same day of transaction so technically okay. not even on a single day i was on a, somebody else's payroll um and the aim of exit was not um to um <laughs> sit in goa or uh, somewhere in a holiday spot rather to pump up uh, the energy to the next level and uh, do much more wonderful things in life that i can do so the entrepreneurial journey is continuing and uh, i think uh, uh, that's there uh, and in a way nothing else is there <laughs> Well, I wish you, I, I wish you all the success with that one too, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, it, it will be a, a, a great journey as well. To come back to you, Mr. Roon, you also took the, the philanthropic journey, but also became a leader in design thinking. How are you spending your time now, and 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 what's kind of the the thinking process post exit, if you want? Uh, two things. Uh, first is to set up an Indian product company on a global map. was a big challenge it required close to 70 1700 crore of investment in building a brand and sales on new brand at intellect level so the intellect is a one full time job but it was more of a coaching enabling mentoring job for a global product company but second job as a design thinker where the design thinking can be applied i personally believe uh, the silicon valley difference to other part of the world is design thinking when stanford started design thinking sometime Early 
I picked up that model of design thinking and become a teacher in design thinking. So what I enjoy being a teacher of design thinking in and applying it in various contexts. So I said, what is the most difficult problem in the country is the rural development. So I'm trying to, in last four years, we looking mission samriddhi, how do you bring a prosperity and looking at a design thinking application where you understand the customer first and who is the customer in development? Is rural India where 900 million people live is the biggest customer base for us to look at it and how do we transform them using design thinking? Now, there's a one way of doing some school, some, def some social work here and there. We said there are already very good work happening. Around 100 organizations we picked up, which are best in class, which are working in it, and created a social network around it, picking up the best practices. The theme of Mission Samriddhi is celebrate what is good happening in the country, whether good is done by government, good is done by the corporate, and good is done by the NGO. I, we don't call NGO, we call development accelerator, anybody who helps the development accelerator. Then we're creating, applying a design thinking to say, how is the panchayat, which is the lowest unit in the country, where the administration is there from state to district to block to panchayat, there are four levels. I need to provide a leadership there. Is a sarpanch is like a CEO of the company. The, the health of the company depends on the way CEO thinks. Similarly, health of the village is depend on how the serpent thinks and how serpent checked. How do we create a leadership capacity building with him along with the National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj in India? So how do we participate in a collaborative manner where sensitivity of NGO, the decision making, the planning process of corporate and reach of government, the three things comes together, it can create a magic of it because government cannot apply their funds for something which is to be tested. Can we create social businesses for them? So our role is to remain behind, but enable multiple NGOs to scale up to 10X applying design thinking. And those design thinking sessions I take for panchayat leader, I personally go and look work with the uh, UP or Maharashtra or Jharkhand, those states. And it's quite enjoying journey for understanding that how intelligent they are, it's only the they need to align their capacities to build up a business is the way we build businesses. So there's no difference between us for looking at them differently and look down upon, but look up, uh, up to them that with that harshness and entrepreneurship spirit they are demonstrating, we need to learn from them and uh, enable them to uh, remove those friction points in their thinking process. So it's a Interesting journey. Thank you for asking this question, Basil. Oh, I, I, and, and I think it's, it's a fascinating part of, of, of where the world is going. I think design and, and, and customer centricity is, is, is the only way to, to be successful in technology today. But that sounds like a topic for another discussion, maybe another time. As we're coming up to kind of the end of the session, I, I have one last question and hoping to see from the audience any, any questions that they may have as well. But... And, 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 you know, I, I, this will be a tough one. So take your time to, to, to think about it, or maybe you already know the answer. But if there's one piece of advice you would give entrepreneurs today and one piece of advice that you'd say, you know, to them, this is the, this is the thing, you know, I wish I knew or I had done better or regret or whatever the case might be, what would that be, that piece of advice? And, you know, I can start with you, Mr. Naga, and, and, and love to hear uh, you know, what is it that you, you tell people today about building a business, exiting it, and, 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 and that journey that you, that amazing journey you've been on? Um, to be frank, I don't have any regret of any sort. So every day it was uh, solving a problem and uh, uh, handling a challenge. And I was always uh, excited about it. There were uh, times when we were uh, feeling very anxious, but uh, that is that was part of journey. If I go back and do the same thing, uh, probably I may not do any different. However, um, if I do it now, um, probably I use uh, more technology and uh, I, 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 I even uh, end up uh, emphasizing on governance far better than what our focus earlier was. So uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, oh, two, three things one has to always keep in mind. Uh, uh, if 
you are not very excited about going to work on a daily basis that is the time when uh, you absolutely have to exit from it um, also second thing uh, if you are not focusing on innovation and uh, value creation and more so becoming operational that is high time for you to exit so the third thing is uh, I, as i mentioned earlier of course any business unless it is profitable it is very difficult to sell however profit profitability alone is not uh, going to uh, get you buyers the governance is much more important if these three things uh, one keeps in mind it would be always a very interesting journey white wise words and 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 definitely um and and definitely ones that i think you know when i think about my journey and the things i did i wish i knew at the time so lots of lots of wise words there mr mr arun um you know over to you same questions yeah, sure. one advice right and i know naga yeah, yeah. took three so yeah. I'll, i'll give you some space there but <laughs> you know the, the biggest thing that you wish you knew or what you would tell entrepreneurs today matters more than most as they think about how they build their businesses and hopefully have the same success that 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 both of you have had i think uh, one advice to entrepreneurs is uh, if it's a one advice i i would say do you know why you are doing business what is the purpose of your business why part of it simon sinek of why is the critical piece of doing the business and passion and ready to be being vulnerable when you are not knowing why the three key magic word acknowledging i don't know just acknowledgement i don't know is the biggest uh, energizer for getting a help from anybody in the world a entrepreneur should do a lot of time entrepreneur gets into ego and that's where the i don't know is a three key magic words well i think those are wise words ego is is a big is a big player and 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 i think saying i don't know i i think is a powerful set of words that let people help you i think that the expression people used to say is if you when you're raising money if you raise if you go raise money you get advice and if you go ask for advice you get money so <laughs> that's the expression that that i yeah. or a thing that i think has been mentioned to to entrepreneurs many times um the the organizer has asked me to kind of it's you know keep you guys for a few more minutes so i'm going to i am going to ask you know one more question and 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 make sure that we we take up the whole time because of how interesting and exciting this is but i think if i look back at kind of strategies exit we discussed some of the strategies the journey the emotional journey and and so on i I'd, i'd love for you to talk about kind of your you know your vision of what's happening in india today and 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 what you'd like to see more of and 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 maybe less of for that matter um you know in your respective industries or in the respective areas that that you've been focused on um mr arun i'll, I'll come to you first on that um i will cover th- uh, in three dimension what has, what is happening in india first of all in last 20 years what has happened in india is what happened in any country like america or russia in 1950s to 1970s so we are just a few decades behind but i think that there is a prosperity which is there the urban societies are that lot of capital which is getting created the beauty is happening is that we have at least good capital getting created in the good hearts which is a first generation entrepreneur earlier all the capital was with the family bound businesses the problem of the family bound business is that i am a trustee of that wealth i am not a owner of decision of that wealth so my role is to protect that wealth for the next generation while a first generation wealth i am a decision maker of it so a lot of money is coming to philanthropy yesterday we had a session of ipi which ajim prem ji has taken uh, more than 100 people were there in that session so there good amount of philanthropy capital which is emerging not in terms of just the money part of it but the thinking part of it intellectual part of it whether the info says uh, nandan nandan would be there rohini would be there or premji would be there or uh, other people anu aga would be there so many industrialists will be there which is contributing to the development the third thing is education which is getting uh, coming at the last mile problem the digital age of india is phenomenal today the corruption level get di- direct credit to the account which 
Nandan has set up infrastructure of Aadhaar card. The entire digital framework, which has happened for 1.3 billion people, where amount can be credited. ISRO can give a, images of the agriculture farms, which is there. The technology usage, which is happening in the country like India, is amazing. And the adoption rate, because we don't measure the adoption rate, we always look at what is not there, and we always see half glass empty. We don't see what has been get filled in last uh, 20 years. Is phenomenally large infrastructure. When I first visited US in 1986. That time I saw the infrastructure of communication, infrastructure of road, infrastructure of power. I think we have all of it available here. Now it's the time for entrepreneurs to just leverage that infrastructure and build the next India, uh, new India in next 10 years. It will be very, very different India. I, I am very optimistic about it. And, and I'm excited as well to see how India has become a leader in technology and will continue to, to lead in that space. Mr. Naga, over to you. What's the future look like to you? Education, you know, Mr. Roon mentioned about that, but you, I'm sure you have a, 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 a bigger vision and picture of this, of this industry. Yeah, uh, although I, I'm in education, so my understanding and perspective is all around education. Um, right to Education Act uh, has uh, brought almost 100% of the students into education fold, school enrollment. However, uh, this education uh, presently, the formal education, what we consider is uh, legitimate, uh, is designed for elimination process. If you look at um, of the students who are enrolling into schools, 74% of the students are dropping off anywhere during their journey during, in the school. It's not that they are so happy and successful, hence they are leaving. They are failed. Only 26% are actually going to colleges. If you ask current from those who are going to college, how many are worthy to recruit? Again, he has a lot of uh, uh, pain point around it. So if you look at entire 25 crore students are there, one, not even 10% from that are actually participating in the globalized economy. 90% of them are actually confined to the regional, local, very milli micro economies. However, the present education, these slogans like one country, one education, one medium, these things, they, they appeal uh, to masses very interesting. But see, India is so different after every 100 kilometers. Uh, the, um, culture is different, language is different, food is different, uh, geography is different. And unless these people are given the kind of skills, uh, the, uh, they exploit the resources in a sustainable way and have a good living, this education is not going to make any sense to most population. And of course, uh, the recent uh, national education policy has given some thought around it but uh, the kind of uh, complexity involved to make it happen, um, it, it's uh, not very easy uh, to see um, the NEP is translated into a proper execution. And in the process, what's happening, uh, we are running out of time, more and more creating useless class of people, unfortunately, um, that's a very uh, unfortunate situation. So uh, I, I appreciate that so much. Personalized education, customer centric design thinking and, you know, based uh, way of delivering education. I can already see the two of you working together and solving this problem for India. But more importantly, I think for everybody, just having the belief that Mr. Arun talked about as the core of how you build a business emphasizing governments and making sure you build your network and relationship with the players because you never know when an exit will happen. Mentally prepare yourself for when it does is the success, is the keys to the success of, an, of a successful exit. Thank you, Mr. Arun. Thank you, Mr. Naga. I really enjoyed talking with you today and really le learned a lot. Rashmi, back to you. Thank you so much, Basil. On behalf of entire TGS team, we'd like to thank you, Arun and Naga Prasad for sharing your entrepreneurial journey and phenomenal experience with the audience. Thank you, Basil, once again for creating such a wonderful panel. Thank you for your time and hope to connect with you all soon in future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. We enjoy. Thank you, Basil, Thank you. for conducting this session and moderating this session.
we'll, we'll get in touch.